Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy New Year. It's the first video of 2023. And today I thought we'd do something a little bit fun. Uh, we're going to take a look at the, I guess, frequency curve of, of a couple of effects units that I have. Uh, I play around with electronic music, so I've got effects pedals and other effects units. And one of the things I thought would be fun to look at is to see just, uh, just what does the frequency response curves or boat plot uh, look like for a couple of these things. So what you're looking at on the scope right now is my Boss Super Phaser Phase Shifter. And if you can see on there, we've got one, two, three, four, uh, looks like about five, five peaks that you can easily see there. And if you don't know, a phase shifter basically is a comb filter, and it's a comb filter that moves across the frequency spectrum. And it gives you that very distinctive phasing sound. So if, you've, if you're into music, you know what that sounds like. Uh, but anyway, if we look here on the scope, uh, as you can see here, those are, the, those are the peaks of the comb filter. And what I can do is, if I uh, if I turn the modulation on, since phase shifters sweep the frequency range, you can see those sweeping back and forth across the frequency range. Now this phase shifter has two different modes. Let's uh, no, yeah, let's bring that down a notch there. And if we turn up the resonance, uh, it's easier to see on the other peaks, but, the, but they do change. They go from being fat to a little bit more narrow. So we're sweeping from um, 100 hertz to 50 kilohertz. So 50 kilohertz is well above what we can, what we can hear but I can bring the, the low end frequency down into the 20 kilohertz range. Now this is sweeping on a logarithmic scale, which is more in tune to how we hear, but I can switch it to a linear sweep, which means that we're starting at 100 hertz here and we're ending at 20 kilohertz here and so you can get an idea you know where those where those comb filter peaks are actually appearing as you can see most of it is much down down in a much lower lower audio range uh, so we've got 100 Hertz 20 so this is mid screen is 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 roughly 10 kilohertz so if we want to get a better representation of that, we could just sweep to 10 kilohertz. Oh, I'm sorry, I changed the start frequency. That's not good. We want to start at 100 and we're going to stop at 10 kilohertz. And if I go back to logarithmic sweep, you can see that a little bit better. So how do we get an oscilloscope to do this, since this is not what oscilloscopes are designed to do? Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an auto setup here and get rid of everything that we had set to make this happen. And I'm going to turn on channel 2. So you can see that. So what we have coming in on channel one is the, the output of the phase shifter, and that's being fed by this swept uh, sine wave going in. And channel two has a sync pulse coming out of it. And if you'll notice, the sync pulse follows the sweep. So let's Let's just set this so it's stationary again. So what we can do with, with a little bit of uh, careful adjustment. Um, my sweep time here is 140, uh, 140 milliseconds. 
I chose that because I have 14 divisions going across on the screen. So if I play with my horizontal here, so I've got 10 milliseconds per division, 14 division, 140 milliseconds. And I can move this, move this over so the start is right there. And then I don't need to see the sync wave, so I can hide that. Now we could leave this like this. And I'm going to put the stop frequency here back up to uh, 50 kilohertz. And we could leave this like this. And it does show that it looks like we're getting a little not very symmetrical getting a little clipping at the bottom of the waveform here but if you want to really look more like oop, wrong channel really look more like a bow plot we're going to bring this down here to so we just see the top half and then we can scale our vertical and there you go it's actually pretty pretty easy to set up and dial in so we're syncing on channel 2 which is a sync pulse coming from the from the function generator and that gives us one sweep across the the display so let's take a look at something else phase shifter is kind of interesting to look at it's uh, most dynamic but we're going to unhook this and we're going to hook up a distortion pedal I have this is an old Roger Mayer Voodoo 1 and let's see here is that going to stay up like that? yeah so the pedal's bypassed right now. Controls aren't, aren't going to do anything here. And you can see that from 100 to 50 hertz, it's just it's passing everything through quite well. Let's put the pedal on. All right, because we have the output of the pedal turned all the way down, it's not going to show us anything. All right, just going to hold it. So let's turn the output up. And we've got the tone turned all the way down. We've got the gain turned all the way down. I mean, I could show if I turn the gain up. You know, gain does have an effect, but let's say turn the tone up. We can see just how it changes the frequency content here. It starts to roll off the low end and boost the middle and the highs a bit. Uh, if I bring this down to 20 kilohertz, you can see that in, this, in the center it's, it's pretty flat. So turn it down, we definitely get a low boost and it cuts the highs. And as we turn it up, We cut the lows and boost the mids and the highs a bit. So, pretty cool. And the next thing we'll take a look at is my Erica Synth's Acid Box. The Acid Box is a clone, I guess, of the Russian of the filter in the Russian Polyvox synthesizer. A number of companies making making clones of this filter. Put this in here, so let's turn the resonance down. We'll turn the cutoff frequency up. Alright, so if we so this has got a level control to bring in. So let's let's set the level up about here. 
and you can see it's 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 pretty flat to 20 kilohertz um, let's see the 50 kilohertz does start to roll it off 100 kilohertz So based on 100, that's 50, so that's 25. So yeah, somewhere around 10 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, it starts to it starts to roll off a bit. So let's bring this back to something a little bit more normal. Go back here. So right now we're set for low pass filter, resonance down, cutoff frequency is up and we turn it on and I'll bring up the level a little bit here um, hmm. oh my bad let's try this again hundred Hertz to start and stop frequency will do 20 kilohertz all right that looks better so bypassed you can see like i said we're we're, we're we're pretty flat out to you know 10 kilohertz or so uh this low pass filter does have a bit of a bump in it so has some some resonance just by default if I turn up the resonance we can see we can raise that peak and as I change the cutoff frequency we can sweep that peak down and back up and if we put this in bandpass we get a very typical bandpass filter low resonance high resonance this is a filter that will self oscillate so if I go up high enough here at some point this is where it starts self oscillating and it just goes crazy so let's turn that back down So pretty cool. Uh, this looks real good on the digital oscilloscope. Um, I have color grading on. If I turn the color grading off, doesn't stand out as well. But you don't need a digital oscilloscope to do this. You can do this on. Um, you could do this on a well a, a digital CRT scope or you can just do this on a good old analog scope and we will take a look at that in just a second so stand by all right we're back with my Hewlett Packard 54603B 60 megahertz digital CRT scope and I've got it set up here and as you can see we can get a nice visualization on this as well looks pretty good let's drop this uh, stop frequency back to 20 kilohertz there we go so it looks pretty good here um, I'm using peak detect which looks better than normal display on here uh, vectors off it's a different look I'm not sure if it's better or worse but you can definitely do this on an older older digital scope that has a, a CRT in it so next we'll take a look at my tech 2215a analog scope
and we're back with my 2215A and I had to turn the lights down a little bit but as you can see we can get a good good view in here as well uh, definitely breaks down a little bit on the lower frequencies but up here it uh, it looks good so whatever kind of scope you have you can definitely set it up to do these kind of kind of displays and of course you can use this to sweep higher frequencies as well so if you've got RF filters uh, if you want to see just how things look coming through an amplifier whatever um, it's kind of a fun use for your oscilloscope that it may wasn't isn't necessarily build is doing um, I do know that my Siglin scope can do do better bode plots if you get a compatible signal generator with it but if you don't want to have that expense you could use what you have at hand all right that about wraps up this video hope you enjoyed it um, I had fun making it uh, this is something I've wanted to do for a while just uh, see what these things actually do from a visual standpoint so I encourage you to uh, do the same if you're so interested. Anyway, uh, give a like or subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.